Items on the agenda may be taken out of order. A member of the board may request the combination of two or more agenda items for consideration. A board member may also request removal of an item from the agenda or delay discussion at any time. The board may take public comments on agenda items at each item is open for discussion. So that takes us to the consent agenda. Mr. President, I'll make a motion that we um, approve the consent agenda as posted. Uh, you you brought up uh, minutes. <coughs> Somebody brought up one minute. Well, minutes. Rich I, just he didn't have the any. minutes were correct. I just minutes were correct. He just wants I, I also have an okay. objection okay. to the minutes. Okay. okay. On the minutes. Uh, which ones? The, the, on the minutes, when you go down the minutes, it's pretty well. Uh, Which one? The special the meeting or the regular the meeting? The one from February 26th. And special, special meeting. Okay. okay. Uh, this pretty much says, uh, goes through and talks about what each person, the honorable that got along with it, uh, spoke that day. Mm -hmm. uh, however, there seems to be a lot left out of uh, one, and that, so I'd like to have that somebody go back, listen to the tape, and complete that. And that's the one on uh, Mr. Hafen, Greg Hafen. Uh, he made some uh, pretty derogatory comments to all the people in the room, and they've all been left out here. Every word that anybody else has said has not been left out. I'd like those notes corrected. All right, I'll make I'll amend my motion then to approve the agenda or approve the consent agenda with the exception of the special um, meeting minutes of 22613 to come back uh, to be completed with uh, Craig Hafen statement being completed. Got that, Mary? Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that. I have a motion and a second. Call for the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, all five members in favor. We go to item five for discussion possible action. I'll turn this over to our legal department. This is in regards to our uh, new personnel employee record. Mr. Bingham. Yeah, um, I'd be happy to, to just kind of lay the groundwork for this item. Um, based on the recent events that took place, um, the, uh, the district has expressed concern, including today, uh, to make sure that employees' information is protected, uh, that it's secure. Um, uh, in, in employees uh, you know, should be entitled to, uh, to confidentiality of, of information, and, and that actually extends to after the employee has terminated uh, you know, employment with the water district, whether that's voluntary or involuntary, and, and even for applicants that may be applying to the district for employment. Um, there is a policy that was put together uh, by Pool Pact, um, who, so the public is aware, Pool Pact is the insurance company that represents uh, several public entities in the state, and they offer advice, especially when it comes to HR issues, to try to assist public entities to, to make sure that they are, you know, operating with best practices and so forth. Um, there is a sample policy that came from Pool Pact that's included in the agenda backup materials. Um, for suggestions of how this could be done. I think it's also important to remember that this isn't, this isn't state law. Uh, this policy is a recommendation from Pool Pact of how this could be handled. Um, the board's certainly willing to, to adopt that in full or make substantial changes to it. I've also noticed there's several employees here and they may have possible insights or recommendations or, or things that uh, give them concern. And so I'd encourage those public employees to you know, speak up if they've got questions. And, um, and I think the board can, uh, can work through to get a policy in place that everybody will be happy with. Okay. Comment from the board? Yeah, I have, a, I, I have a couple of comments. First of all, I agree with you. As far as like the employee's input, it, you know, it's basically their information. And definitely we need to be cognizant of that and allow their input. You know, I, there's really, you know, two parts of the district. We have the employees and we have the administration. You know, the, the employees are good, hardworking people. This district wouldn't run without us five sitting up here, I guarantee it. Because they go out every day 
and they do their job and they do it well and they're a good bunch of people and they need to be they need to be appreciated we need to value them their opinions need to carry weight with us when they come forward with concerns those concerns need to be listened to and they need to be follow up, followed up with they can't just be brushed under the table we've lost a lot of credibility with their employees and I hope I hope to install in this kind of policy that we regain some of that. And uh, I've read through it, every word. I think it's great. Um, I have no problems with it. Um, I do want to state that, that at the meeting, I did say that that was out of a personnel file. I think we all realized that those, whether they were copied or whatever, they came out of personnel files. And uh, in the minutes, um, I asked both for a point of order and asked if uh, Sandra had gotten uh, Mary's permission to read from her evaluation. Sandra stated that she did not ask Mary for permission because it was a matter of record. Personnel files, their evaluations, are not a matter of record. Um, I further stated that it was from a personnel file and confidential. Um, Sandra stated that it was a personnel file, but it was a reference to Ken Rock and the fact that, it was that the employees were upset with Ken Rock's direction with the district and felt that it was important. So I just want to clarify that it was brought up at the meeting that it was a personnel file. And I, you know, uh, that's, that's all I want to bring Okay, thank you, Rich. Has any employees got any uh, input that they'd like to give to us at this time? Or uh, have you had an opportunity to look at this? Uh, Valerie Martinez, I think just the consensus with the staff is we do just want to make sure that our personnel records are just that personal. Um, and that we are being protected so um, if this policy that you guys are proposing is going to protect us then we're we're happy with that we just want to make sure our records are safe yeah thank you Val, may i do it Valerie? Valerie, part of my motion would be that that uh, when i make the motion is that this uh, language is given to each of the employees the ability to read it and make sure that you feel like you're protected with it i think that so, would be Great. You know, before before this happened, we had a, a litigation meeting. We talked about this, and I I felt it was important for board members to have access to personnel files to make sure that the general manager. Our job is to make sure the general manager is doing his job, and to and to make sure that he's doing his job. Part of that is the employee evaluation, and and I felt like it was important for us to have that access to make sure he's doing his job. And I will, I will, I will say that Sandra was not at that meeting. It, it was a, we, it was after the special meeting. We kind of called everybody. When Carl asked if uh, he could look at the personnel file, and we had that discussion. And and Sandra was not there. But um, I, I, I just want the employees to know that we take this very seriously. I, I take this very seriously, and and. If nobody else has a comment, I'm ready to make a motion. My only comment is I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to accept this, even though I've read through it. I agree with everything here before the employees look at it right. and, and have any input. Okay. Right. So that's just my other comment. Okay. Right, Helen Bunkerville. Uh, one issue I haven't read over it yet is um, just kind of a reality check. Is what I understand is the employees can write evaluations to the general manager in there, and that's what was read last time. Reality, what employees can write a negative review of their boss that regulates their pay, their promotion, and their job? Yeah. Reality is an employee is not going to write that in there. There needs to be a way that they can bypass the general manager and go to all the board members so that general manager is not saying that. Any employee is going to write a few positive things and leave out all the negative things on evaluation that their employer is reading. And that's just reality. That one that was read, one positive thing. There needs to be a way that that can bypass the general manager and go directly to all five of you, not one of you, just to be evaluated. You know, Bro, I think that's kind of a good point. And I've, I've heard that, you know, the chain of command and 
should have gone to their manager and stuff. But I think there there should be an avenue for the employees to communicate with the board with with legal counsel. I, is that in place? Is that in policy? Is that something? It's not. I think it's important to weigh and balance that to to make sure that you know it could become chaotic and gets out yeah, of hand. And I know you're not, I you're not that. meaning something like that. But yeah, I, and Aaron and I have had discussions on this, and, and uh, Aaron and I talked that uh, he would talk with staff and the <coughs> input to see if there was something they might suggest for how that could be done. But at this point, there's no policy in place that would speak to that issue. There's no there's no law on point on that issue that you know says this is how it's going to be or this is how it should be. I think that's a policy determination. You guys as board members, <coughs> and I. I, I, I think it would be wise to seek the... I think, I think though, the, like the drug policy, the new drug policy we enacted, wasn't there something in there that uh, if somebody was <coughs> had some suspicion or reasonable suspicion that somebody was on drugs, that they would go to the person's supervisor? Absolutely, yeah. So in that case, I mean, that kind of spells that out. But, I mean, with any other issue, and like you said, I mean... You know, I don't think the employees are going to go to board members with minute problems. You know, with, with little with little stuff. I don't think that's the case at all. So. Yeah, and this is something. There, needs, need, there needs to be an avenue. Or I mean, we don't have this on the agenda for today, but I think it's it's certainly a point that should be discussed. I know there's already been discussion on it, so. I think Aaron's got good suggestions, and I think employees are making suggestions. So maybe if the board wants, we could put that on an agenda but, for a future meeting. And, and uh, why don't why don't you look into that if you would? Please? Yeah, that would be a good idea. So we can go ahead and put this place in place tonight. And well, we'll I think I think my are you ready for lunch? Was there any other comment? Yeah, I I, I okay. want to make a comment. On it. Uh, it would have been nice if this would have been would have been in place before this incident happened. But, you know, uh, it's a little unfortunate that, that we're not getting the whole story out. Uh, it wasn't the day we had the, uh, as Rich said, it wasn't the day we had the meeting that, that uh, I originally asked. In fact, I had asked uh, if that was possible for me to look at those. And I only want to look at the, the only thing I want to look at is, is one one item of was the actual reviews done by Ken. So I wanted to see if if uh, if he was heavy handing people or not seeing people correctly or whatever. I won't go into what those said, but uh, I think you'd all be shocked at what, what they did say. Because uh, it's not what you might think. But nonetheless, Nonetheless, uh, I did not do anything until uh, Bo's office was contacted. Bo was out of town. One of his attorneys there said that he didn't see any problem with it. He would contact uh, Cool Pack. They were contacted. There was a letter that came later, or right after that, stating that it was okay to go ahead and do that. I had uh, permission from Bo to go ahead and do that, so the actual day that uh, we decided it was okay to do it, all the board was aware of that, they all heard that, and they all heard it together. So I think we, you know, the last after the last meeting, uh, just so everybody in this room understands, this board all got together and we talked about we're going to work together and we're going to make this thing happen because this is too important for the community. And four of us shook hands. Uh, one didn't. So, uh, you know, it's a little unfortunate. It appears that we're still kind of picking away at each other. But uh, nonetheless, go ahead and make a motion. Well, and just to, just to clarify, um, there isn't a state law that particularly addresses this issue, I think, as the board knows. This, the pool pack was contacted, and they did provide the, the policy of a recommended practice. The district didn't have a formal policy that it directly addressed the issue, so uh, the district was able to, to make a determination of, of a way to balance those safeguards and um, 
there, there and, is. And, and the board came up with a, a decision of how that would be done, uh, which is that there would be board members and, and a member of staff actually present. But in any event, I think we, we've, we've learned from, from what's happened. I think the most important thing at this point is to get the policy in place. Let's get it in there as strong as we can. One thing I will say is that you know this this policy is, is quite strict, which is which it sounds like that's what the board wants, and I think that's good. I think that's what, what the employees want too. So. Right. I think that's what the employee wants. The employees want as well. I do want to make sure that the board's aware that I mean, as always, we need to act consistently with our own policies. And so, if we get an extremely strict policy in place. We need to make sure that we have staff properly trained, board members properly informed, so that we're actually going to follow the policy that we enact. And so, um, you know, I think the first step in that is to get the employees to actually read the policy and become familiar with it, and they know how it works. But as new board members come on, we'll probably have to make that part of our like orientation package, so everybody knows how that works, and so we don't we don't end up violating our own policy. And that's you know that would obviously bring on additional liability to the district, which is another concern that, that I would have so also there's some misunderstanding out there with the NAC uh, as far as the employee that, that deals with state employees I think a lot of that's been bannered around but I, I think you know that misunderstanding that that doesn't deal with municipalities or water districts that's with state employees correct yeah my understanding of the NAC is that that applies to state employees and and our employees here at the district are not we're a political subdivision of the state of Nevada but we're not a state employee we're um, we're, we're more like a, a, a local municipality <clears throat> okay. also uh, just one one point of clarification when we did discuss the review of the personnel files would be two board members so as to not violate the open meeting law and one staff member would sit in while they review them, correct? Correct. Do you want to make a board? I'll make a motion. I make a motion that we direct staff to brief uh, to propose this to the employees to get their feedback, their input, and to uh, come back to us on the, at the next meeting with the proposal. Can I have a motion? I'll second that motion. I have a motion and a second. Call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Carries unanimously.